building. This is where the original one stood. But now one of the most important things I want to point out is over on your right, it's the brown building with the red windows. This is the Anchor Tavern. There's been a pub on that site for over 400 years and many famous people have drank in that pub. William Shakespeare himself, he used to use the attic as a dressing room for when he performed at the Globe Theatre. Charles Dickens wrote many of his famous novels inside there, such as Great Expectations. And it's also where myself and the crew will be this evening conducting the research that we do for this commentary. If you would like to join us, we'll be there from about 8 o'clock. Just gone through Penistry Railway Bridge. First railway bridge here on the River Thames, so it doesn't look like much, but it is very special to us and it stops the trains from falling on our heads. Do you have any Pirates of the Caribbean fans on board? Yeah, you might want to get your cameras out for this. Just over on the right, you've got a pirate ship that has nothing to do with those films, but it is a fully working replica of Sir Francis Drake's Golden Hind. Now the original, it was one of the first British ships to circumnavigate the globe, and it took Drake and his crew three years to do so, from 1577 to 1580, which is very impressive for the time that it was. And it was originally called the Pelican, it was renamed Mid-Voyage. You can go on board, you can explore for as little as six pounds, so I would recommend that. Now this is the famous London Bridge, and it doesn't look like it, and if you don't believe me, it does say it on the bridge itself as we go through. It often gets confused with Tower Bridge. Tower Bridge has two towers, so that's nice and distinguishing. This is actually the fifth London Bridge to stand here. As I'm sure you've all heard, the nursery rhymes, they've fallen down and they've burned down. But the one before this started to sink into the mud. So they took it down brick by brick and they sold it to an American man who then reconstructed it over Lake Havasu in Arizona, where it still stands today. Now just over on your right, you've got London Bridge Hospital, one of London's most private and most expensive hospitals. They're only known for two things, broken bones and heart attacks, because you go in there with a broken bone, they give you the bill, and then you have the heart attack. <laughs> but just behind that, you've got the Shard, or the Shard of Glass, Western Europe's tallest building, stands at 310 metres tall. I know it looks unfinished, but that is actually how it was designed. It's made up of 72 storeys, luxury apartments, offices, restaurants. It's also home to the five-star Shangri-La Hotel. And right up on the 72nd floor, there is a viewing platform. But again, I'm going to give you another tip. If you cross over to the other side, just on your left, you've got the Walkie Talkie building. It's the one with the curved face at the front. Its official name is 20 Fenchurch Street, but they also have a viewing platform. That one is free of charge, and it's called the Sky Garden. All you have to do is go to the Sky Garden website. You can book in advance and go up for free. So there's another tip. <laughs> Over on your right, you might not be able to see it. It's just had a fresh coat of camouflage. This is London's very own warship, the HMS Belfast. She was one of the first ships to fire her guns in anger on D-Day. And she also played a very crucial role in protecting the Arctic convoy, which was Russia's supply route during the Second World War. Nowadays, though, it is permanently moored up here as an extension of the Imperial War Museum. So you can go on board, have a look around. There are about nine decks to explore, right down from the engine room up to the bridge steeped in history. If you are going to go, leave yourself a couple of hours to have a good look around. And just a fun fact, there are 12 guns on board, 6 forward and 6 aft, capable of firing a 100 pound shell, which is the equivalent of a small child, about 14 miles. So I imagine that for the score. Now just ahead of us, I'm sure you can all see it, is Tower Bridge. But there is no need to rush to the front to get your photos. The captain, he is in a very good mood today. He's already told me that what he's going to do for you 
is he's going to turn the boat sideways and get you a nice unobstructed view of the bridge. The best view of the bridge that you'll get here in London today. So your view of Tower Bridge will be over on your right hand side. And here we have a perfect photo opportunity. If you can get that red double-decker bus right in the centre of Tower Bridge, that is what we like to call the money shot. Anywhere else here in London, they'll charge you about five or ten pounds for a postcard of that picture. But as I said, because we're nice, we give it to you for free. We pay that bus driver every day. It's his name's Dad. <laughs> now, Tower Bridge is a part bascule, part suspension bridge. So the centre bascules, they do open up. And if you have a ship tall enough, you can call up Tower Bridge, give them 24 hours notice, and they'll open it up for free. The walkways at the top, they were closed due to lack of use, but they have been made into an attraction. So if you look up, you can see some glass floors, and if you're brave enough, you can walk across and get a bird's eye view of the bridge. It was designed in the Gothic style to match its neighbour, the Tower of London, which will shortly be on our right hand side. And there's another money shot. That's Simon. Thanks. <laughs>